What is up guys, it's James from James' Jeff's House. In today's video, I will be upgrading two corn snakes to bigger tubs. I will be showing you how I start a roach colony and I will be showing you the male Vietnamese blue beauty snake for the last time. That snake is being sold tomorrow. I actually almost sold it today, but we're kind of not sure. Like I said, there was a little bit of a mishaps. When I put them in, I give them different colored lids so I know which one the male is. And I don't think I was really paying attention. Now, the breeder is absolutely amazing and she gave me photos of the parents, exactly all the information she has when they were born, um, all that stuff. And I can, I can actually tell just by the pattern which one she claimed was the male and which one she claimed was the female. And I'm pretty sure it's accurate. Um, but I took one to work. I had my buddy Armando. Um, a lot of people know Armando. I had him pop it for me. I trust him. He's really good with the bluebirds. And he said he thinks it was the male, but he's not sure. And he checked again. And he's like, no, it's the female for sure. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to bring them both in. We're going to double check everything. I'm going to bring that paperwork so it's obvious. And then my my buddy will end up buying the mail. So after that, you can pending. Of course, you never know if that's going to go 100%. But if it does, expect two more exoterras. Um, I've got a lot of geckos I want to get adult size. And I honestly, one of them will go to the lily white, no matter what, just because it's a lily white. But that's that's how that is. Actually, let me check on Paradise really quick. So here she is. She's almost, almost an adult. Let me pull out a, the small adult female out of this. So this tank right here currently has a male and three females, which is a little bit more than I want, but that's the small adult female. She's laying eggs. Look at Look at Paradise, from right next to her. They're, she's darn near like 10 grams, if that more. Um, so she'll be laying some eggs for me very shortly, hopefully within a month or two. I would love to get some babies from her. Currently we have eight eggs cooking, two of which should be hatching any day, and then another two which don't look so great. Um, so. We'll see what's up with those. But without even cutting or editing or anything, let's start a new roach colony. So right here on top, I have, well, I have two empty tubs. We really only need the one now. I'm gonna, I would recommend using a dark tub just because they prefer darkness. But for the sake of the video, I'm gonna use this opaque one just so you can kind of see what's going on inside. Um, actually, I, I am, I'll make a pause video, but I'm going to edit a chunk out where I go get some egg crate from my bedroom. This is all the clean egg crate I have. I got it from my old job uh, cooking and we got eggs. So egg crate. I have a lot of dirty egg crate I got from the place I work when we get insects. Um, I have so much of it. I, I put it in cups when I sell roaches. Just because it's slightly dirty, no one's going to care. It's not like they're going to keep it for very long. So, you got your tub right here. You got your egg crate. Pick a side that you want to be the front. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put same sides together. So, there's kind of a top and a bottom to egg crate. the tops together. Then bottoms and the tops and the bottoms, just like that. So I'm just gonna kind of go in like that. I want to fill up, fill it up. So that's the back. So that's where the heat's gonna be. That's where the bulkier roaches are gonna be. If you look in another tub of mine, you can see it's all along the back and in the front. I just have some extra, just to give us some extra space. So that's kind of what we're going for here. I don't know if I can. I find that strong. So, front, front, 
back to back. And the reason we do that, uh, is if you stack them just like that, they get really tight. So if you do it like this, it allows a lot of air gap in there. And that's the perfect room for the roaches to get in and feel secure. And that's what you want. Warm, humid, secure, dark roaches with lots of excess food and room will breed like crazy. Uh, there's a there's a lot of it's a long list of things you can do, and if you have all of those, you have the best results. If you have most of those, you'll have good results. If you're missing some of those, you won't have very good results. So when I built my rack system, I said I'm just gonna go all out. I gave them large, mostly dark tubs. They actually didn't have the dark ones when I started it. But of course they're making new tubs every every day is a new new tub, so they're trying to make money, they're trying to change the sizes. So I got dark tubs, I keep them humid, I feed them in excess with oats and carrots, I give them tons of space to hide, I keep them warm and I keep them humid. And they just they blow off, they they breed like crazy. And it gives me excess to sell. So what I want to do before I add any roaches. It's just add a base of oats. This is just the rolled oats from Wico from the bulk section. And it doesn't need to be a lot. When you first put roaches in, there's not going to be many until they really start breeding. It's just, it's good for them. It's, it's good to have them. So I'm going to take from my biggest colony, and I'm not going to take a ton. Uh, every time I start a new colony, I leave it alone for as long as possible. I have this main colony. If I'm selling roaches or feeding roaches off, I almost always only take in this colony. And what that does is it allows my other colonies to bulk up a little bit. And then what I do is I, is I sell some of those from other ones. Or, I, or if, I'm, if I have a big order, I'll take from other ones. And just keeping this one really big works well for me. So, And for whatever reason, I have discoid roaches in this colony. I don't know where they came from. They're annoying, and I, I tried. I tried to feed them off, but the only thing I, I have that's big enough to eat them is my chameleon. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put in a couple uh, breeder females, some that look like they got babies. Um, nothing too small. I want I want good genetics in here. This colony has a mix of everything. I have a colony that's only huge, huge uh, dubia. I had one colony that was only light colored dubia, only like, uh, like some get really black shells as adults and some stay a little bit lighter. It's only light ones. And that colony unfortunately had a little bit of an infestation with confused flower beetles, which isn't bad at all. It's not dangerous to the colony, it's not dangerous to your reptiles. Um, we were just finding them everywhere and that's what they were breeding in that colony like crazy. You just look at it and they were all over the acreage. So. I'm putting 10, 15, maybe 20 females, and then I'll probably put like five males in. And that's honestly it. Uh, if you're starting a colony for yourself and you have a bearded dragon and you're trying to save a little bit of money and you don't buy as many as often, what I recommend is buy as many as you can to start the colony and then don't touch it. The thing I hear the most, when, when I'm selling roaches, I have a lot of people who want to start their colony and they go, Give me as many as I can get for this much money. I want to start a colony. And I, I, I tell them what I'm telling you, but they don't listen. What they do is they, they start the colony and then they start feeding off some of the babies. But the babies aren't big enough yet. So they go, oh, I'll just feed off a couple of the females. And they do that once or twice and all of a sudden they have one or two females left and their colony is just dying. So what they do then is they end up just buying more from me and just feeding them off and just forgetting about their colony. So what I recommend, and I mean, if you're not if you're not doing it, your colony is just going to die. It's just starting your colony and leaving it. That's the best thing you can do. Um, putting some babies, if you have some babies you want to put in there, that's always a good thing. What it basically does is it starts the generation a little bit faster. It starts the first generation. So what I'll do is I'll scrape off some of the adults on here, on one of these egg crates, and then I'll just... And that just kind of starts everything off. Make sure I didn't put any discoid roaches in here. 
I don't know if they're breeding, if they're hybridizing. I don't know what they're doing. But they're in my. They're in at least this colony. It's really annoying. And I know it's. It doesn't matter, but they're not harming anyone. But it annoys me. So that's the colony right now. Um, tomorrow, when I go and put carrots in all my colonies, I'll give a little portion of this colony, just a small cut a piece, and I'll watch it. And if they eat it all, I'll give them another piece. You always want to make sure there's they don't run out, but you want to make sure you don't want them, you don't want too much left sitting there because it'll go bad and they won't eat it and it'll just get smelly. But you also don't want you don't want them to run out and to think. There's no food. You want to make sure that they're always full, the roaches are always full, they always know there's going to be food. With that in mind, they will breed like crazy. So with that being said, that's how you set up a Dubia roach colony. My rack is sitting at 92.7 exactly, as it always is, and I'm going to move some corn snakes. All right, what is up, you guys? Um, it's obviously a lot darker outside. There was a party at the office of my apartment complex, tacos, snow cones. Uh, they had to take someone away in an ambulance. Not that that's funny. It's just situational humor. Um, so I got two big enclosures, two big tubs. These are, what, 40 quart? Yep, exactly, 40 quart tubs. Uh, coming out of these, which are probably like 12, 18 quart tubs. So one thing that's a real step up is these guys have paper towel hides, just like this, paper towel too. Um, they're getting a little too big for those. And if you really need to get the snake out to like check it, make sure it's eating, make sure all that good stuff, you can have to break it. And it just, it's annoying, they get dirty, um, all that stuff. So this is something my buddy taught me. Uh, from my big snakes, I use water bowls from Dollar Tree for dogs that are large. They're perfect. They come in a variety of colors, blue, pink, green, red, and then like a white with a flake, just because white gets dirty so easy. Um, but I bought a bunch of those for water dishes. He said, go back and buy a bunch more, drill a big hole, and use them for hives. Now, this big hole is a big investment. The bit to cut the hole cost me $40 because I had to buy a nice one. I didn't want it breaking. And it was actually a two-piece set. Each piece was like 20 bucks. And then I tried to put it in my drill and it needed a bigger drill. And the drill I had was too small. It wasn't uh, up to standard for that size bit. So I had to sell my drill and I had to buy a whole new drill. So I'm in this at about $160. But then I sold my drill for like 40 bucks. So these work awesome. Um, the more I make, the better it is on my investment. I use the drill for so many other things anyway, including drilling the tub. Um, this tub has 18, 7, 16 size holes in it, and it's perfect. It's got tons of airflow, and I've only got one of these. I'm going to take some more water bowls tomorrow and make a couple more, but one of my snakes is going to get one today. This is my pair. Um, I'm actually going to with a female that one, just because ladies first. I don't know. It's 2019. I know that doesn't matter. But recently, I did upgrade them to bigger water dishes instead of a... 3.25 ounce. It's now, what is this, an 8 ounce dish? Yeah, it's an 8 ounce dish. So they have more than twice as much water. And it's bigger. It's it's Eventually, they'll just have water dishes this size. Um, it's just baby steps. But let me take this girl out. Because this is the last time she will need this, I can strip it open and throw it away. You can see how they just wrap themselves in there. There she is. She's getting big. Look at that. So that is this corn snake. Just to tell, just to just to get you to understand how much corn snakes eat. I feed them once a week, and if I have extra mice and they want it, I feed it to them. Um, if it's thawed, of course. This corn snake will be a year old in January, and it's, it's, it's the beginning of October. So this corn snake is huge for a year old. I'm actually gonna take down my scale and weigh it for you guys. Sorry, this is gonna be a real long video, but 
Who cares? Lately, I've been passing out while it's uploading. I it'll upload while I'm asleep. I just won't like confirm. Okay, so I got my scale. This I just use this bowl. I put it on, I zero it out, and I use it to keep the animals contained, especially crested geckos. They they move way too much. So let's put it in here. One hundred and eighteen grams. So one hundred and eighteen grams in a year. That's insane. Oh my goodness. Let's do some math here. So corn snakes. The rule of thumb. Now I've never bred corn snakes, but I've of course done a lot of research on breeding them because it's something that I want to do in the future. The rule of thumb is three years, three feet, and three hundred grams. So this snake is less than a year old, it's all of 20, it's, it's probably about two feet if I, I'm guessing small at 20 inches, um, it is 118 grams. Now for a small young snake, it takes a lot to get up to that size. Now it's, it's, it's you know, quintupled in size since I got it in a year. It only has to tr barely triple in size it's not even, it doesn't even have to triple in size, less than triple in size to be breeding size. So it'll be ready really soon. I am going to wait that three years though, just to play it safe. Um, at least that's what I'm saying now, you know, who knows? I'm going to cool them this year, but in a year, if they're big enough and I cool them, I might think about it. Now, that's something I don't really recommend, but if I can just get her going and she can throw a couple, you know, her first clutch is not going to be great because that's how snakes work. At least that's how I hear they work. Then I can get her doing that the first year. By her third year, she can throw me a nice, big, healthy clutch. So I'm going to put her in for the first time. She's got lots of room. She's not used to it. And she's going right underneath the, the aspen. So that's perfect. Whatever she wants. I noticed my snakes don't use these as much as I would think they would. Um, I usually find them out and about, but then again, I do work with colubrids. So, and another point is the snakes I have with these hides are huge. They're about her size, if not a little bit smaller. Um, so maybe they don't feel as secure in them. They're not something tighter. It's what they're used to, but nevertheless, there she is. And I believe I gave her a name at one point, but I don't remember what it is. The male, the male is tangerine. I remember that. That's what I named him because he's bright orange. I recently, my buddy that I worked for, Glenn, got a trio of corn snakes. They're called the Red Zeps. Pardon me. Personally, I've never heard of them, but they're supposed to be these crazy, extreme, amazing corn snakes. To me, honestly, they look just like high orange, high red, with high white, which is nice, but at the same time, they look almost exactly similar to my nail, which I'm not sure how much red zeps go for. I'm sure they're only on the market every once in a blue moon and they go for a couple hundred dollars each. To be honest with you, this male who has just not, just quite not enough, not as much white as the pictures I've seen, but I'm thinking he might grow into it, especially on the tail. Um, 25, I paid $25 for this thing. I'm being 100% honest with you, it might have been 30. It was 25 or 30. Yeah, it was 25 or 30. Uh, and he's extreme reverse Okati. It's crazy. He's got those huge white borders. Uh, I'm excited to own this snake. When I bought him off a wholesale order, about four snakes, about two Hypo Motleys and two reverse Okatees. And the Hypo Motleys ended up both being boys, so I sold them. And the reverse Ogatees, I got a pair, so I kept them. He's not quite as big as the female, just a little bit smaller, but he's male, so I'm not really worried about it. He's gonna have a paper towel hide for the next day or two till I get another hide going. And he's gonna produce some absolute banger babies. I'm gonna keep probably the nicest two females back, along with a male. If a male comes out nicer than him, I'm gonna keep it back. And then the nicest two females I'm going to keep back. And that way, five years from now, so two years from they, when they have babies, and then three years after that when those babies raise up, 
I'll have a bunch more really nice animals. So hopefully those get put together. Well, reverse Okatees will give me 100% Okatee pattern for the most part. I know patterns polygenic, it will vary. But Okatee is just a melanistic, so I will get 100% a melanistics. And I can't wait for that because, of course, my genes are confusing. I want all my babies to look the same. Um, and, of course, lately, the female is super light. The male is super dark, saturated orange. I'm almost thinking one of them is something else instead. It's just breed them and wait to find out, I guess. But here's him going into his home for the first time, his new home for the first time. Straight into the, uh, straight into the aspen. So... Anyway, that's going to wrap up today's video. There's not much going on. Um, if I remember, I'll film the male Vietnamese Blue Beauty before I give them away, before I sell them. And other than that, I hope you guys really enjoyed this video. I'm James from James and Jeff Tiles. You can check me out on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, jamesjeptiles at gmail.com if you have any personal questions. And like, comment, subscribe. Hit the notification bell if you want to see a vid another video. Um, it really helps out the channel. It really keeps me motivated to doing it. Of course, I'm not going to stop no matter what. Um, I do a daily video. I do it every day. Seven days a week, I've been doing almost daily videos for about four months now. And starting a couple weeks ago, it's seven days a week. It was about six. Now it's seven, guaranteed, 100% every time. No questions asked. And I will be filming all of my reptile content. And eventually, I'm going to start doing cars, too. I'm I'm going to start making videos about my car. Hopefully, hopefully, hopefully. So, anyway, I really hope you guys enjoyed. Uh, have a good day.